could, for that, uh, could, uh, you know, he's seen that he's a lot interested of the in. Yeah, but I don't know that, you know, like, um, uh, he could really get into the real politic uh, of it all, you know, and like biting the bullet and doing what the, the big guys say to do, uh, you know. He might be a good, like, field agent of some sort. Yeah, maybe... Uh, Gathering information or, or yeah. like, meeting people, the whole thing about meeting well, people. Well, schmoozing yeah, he's schmoozing. very good at, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, I think a lot of... The, and this is something we should mention. I mean, a lot of the key to understanding Terry is understanding his parents. Um, his father, who's uh, now no longer with us, uh, um, who's a very interesting guy, um, but a very severe sort of harsh guy. He, he was very much of a piece with the, uh, the headmaster of land, and he was, a, you know, just sort of given to kind of harsh anger, and and uh, you know, he he was he wanted Terry to be on the football team and all this, and you know, th this is something my parents never did to me. Thank God. I mean, uh, they they were sort of. I won't say they never, you know, got down on me about how I ought to behave and what I ought to be doing. But it wasn't like I was worthless and if I wasn't on the football team. There, right? and and he got a lot of that um, uh, pressure from his father. So he got this very severe stuff from his father, whereas his mother has always been very. Uh, mothering, uh, you know, and uh, um, it's always like, oh, why are you so hard on him? And so she's always like, takes care of him and sort of, you know, leads him by the hand and, and his father w was the opposite, like, you know, just getting down on him. And th there was a lot of that. And, and I, I, I feel like a lot of this, what I was talking about, uh, you know, these exercises in failure are also sort of exercises in trying to get his father's approval, which of course now he'll never get because his father's uh, dead. And, uh, you know. Um, or maybe to go against what his father wanted in a way. Well, that too. I mean, that's the flip side of it too. To fail at that, you know. I don't know. It's just these strange exercises in some sort of futility. Um, yeah, it seems like, in a way, women to him are they they serve kind of a savior role as well as yeah, a very much so. Uh, temptation role. Yeah, well, I mean, Catholic I think it's thing. just a sort of a natural, uh, you know. Uh, I mean, he is half French after all, right? Uh, um, but uh, I think he's interested in women the same the same way any. Uh, healthy guy uh, who isn't gay is interested in women too. Uh, Wasn't he interested you know. in men sometimes? I think he's had some uh, episodes in that uh, department, but I don't think that's his primary, uh, you know, I think that's more any port in a storm kind of stuff than, uh, uh, or, or just try, you know, I'll try anything once, uh, but uh, um, I, I think there has been some stuff there, but uh, nothing too serious that I know of. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, no, he, he's actually, when, when he's on a roll, he's, he's very good with women. Uh, um, the, I, the, there I take off my hat to him. Uh, he's, uh, um, he manages to uh, exercise some charm on, on them quite a bit. I think some of it actually uh, paradoxically is I think he does seem so helpless you know he brings out the mothering instinct and like this poor guy he's like you know I gotta help him uh, uh, and he's so smart and he's got all these yeah right right uh, and, and he tends to be uh, women tend to believe in him a lot and like uh, you know his potential uh, 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 this has gotten a little harder as he's gotten older uh, perhaps um, but even a few years ago he was still partying pretty hardy and then he just sort of got I, I know well like an 18 year old yeah yeah well he yeah that's the other like thing he's had many young girlfriends now this uh, um, this is I think a little easier to do in France than it would be in the States um, but he, he's into these sort of uh, uh, 
like you know pretty young girls, uh, teenagers. Uh, <laughs> I wish you could have seen this. The, nothing ever came of this, by the way, but he met this woman at a bookstore when I was, I was staying with him for a few months in Paris uh, a few years ago. And he met this woman, and, or I should say, he met this girl, and, uh, 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 and we're sort of talking, and he leans over to me, he's like, she's 16 years old. You know, and he's like, Man, you know, as I say, nothing came of this. Uh, um, but uh, she was French. Uh, I think she was French. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she was. Um, uh, no, I think he just didn't get her phone number, and he figured he'd run into her. Some, some kind of thing. By that point, he'd kind of lost interest. Really, not not a hundred percent. But uh, he had this long thing with this girl who was like 18 or something and apparently she really broke his heart and shot him down pretty hard and then he says that ever since then he's just like I'm not into it but after that he got married to this woman Dominique and, and his divorce just uh, recently uh, came through he's now a free man again uh, um, which yeah, I just in case anyone's interested yeah he's yeah yeah he's now he's now back again. on the block um, uh, this woman Dominique She's a very, a very sweet woman. I met her, and I, I definitely like her. And he liked her, and she likes him, uh, or at least she did. Uh, I, and I think even, I think they'll probably end up being friends somewhat. Um, but you know, neither of them had ever been married before, and they used to. I've heard this whole story. They lived down the street from each other. They used to have coffee every morning at this bar, the Cactus, in in Paris, which was his local bar, a uh, very nice place, uh, yeah, and, um, that's where we met, oh, we, we and I met. oh okay, um, and, uh, so they just got to be friends, and then, I think, I know with Terry it was like, he had some idea that, you know, it was going to be sort of beyond sex, that it was going to be like this, this, uh, friendship, and it was going to work, but, I don't think this was Dominique's idea. <laughs> I think she was looking for more like the real thing. And uh, apparently uh, uh, she just, you know, wasn't really his type. And I can see that. She's not, uh, though she, you know, it's, it's not like she's ugly or uh, far from it, uh, but she's not really my type either, I, I wouldn't say. Uh, I, I hope she's not watching this. Uh, she's very sweet. Um, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> They seem to be. They, I've, I've seen a picture of her, and they looked like they were related or something. Very. Yeah, I can a, see In that. a way, yeah. they, they seem to be very yeah. much similar. You know, the way. I think that's what he was drawn to. Yeah, this, perhaps. This but mental, he also. Intellectual friendship. He never really gave it a shot. I mean, right after he got married, uh, he got these two bulldogs, and I think this was. Uh, I think this was a way of not having to live with Dominique. I think that I, and Dominique's apartment, more coffee, more, more coffee for both of us, yeah. yeah. Um, Dominique's apartment was just like full of a million little tchotchkes, like, you know, tiny little porcelain figurines, you know, everywhere, it's like, don't sneeze because you might not and so what does he, he do he gets these figurine. yeah 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 so what does he do he gets these two bulldogs which are completely out of control <laughs> um both of us yeah um and coincidence or conspiracy <laughs> you be the judge um we need the more time <laughs> yeah okay um so uh you know, so, and that that was a way of like uh, she, of course, refused to have them anywhere where she was living, and then there I would think she was completely reasonable. To, I've never met these dogs, but everything I've heard about them is they're completely out of control. So he would he he kept his place or something? Or? Yeah, yeah, he kept his place, which the dogs managed to Thrash. destroy, you know, shit all over, piss all over, you know, chew up, uh, etc. He had, it's too bad, he had this nice little place, 
and he just like trashed it and he, he could never Bretonnerie? Yeah, 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 Rue Saint-Croix de la Bretonnerie um, in the uh, fourth arrondissement. Um, but he never really liked that apartment. He was always going on and on about how terrible it is. I, of course, the New Yorker, I'm like, what are you talking about? This is a great place. It's a great uh, spot. It was kind yeah. of small. Though. Yeah, it was, but it was, it was livable. Yeah. You know, it yeah. had this loft bed and, you know, it had a balcony. Uh, I mean, you could do a lot worse. Uh, in Paris, you could certainly, and now he has. See, now he's he's got a place, but it's tiny uh, compared to that one. Um, now he, uh, he he was like, I'm just gonna move down with my mother for a month or two, and I, the minute he said this, I was like, No, this is gonna last for a long time, and it has. Um, and he's struggling to get out of it and get a place of his own again. You know, and like actually, had the, he had it all together, and he just sort of trashed it. And he didn't get that he was just going to end up living with his mother for a long time. Where he lives with his mother is um, a place called Jean Robert. It's um, it's a very lovely place in the country in central France. Uh, um, uh, it's near the nearest town is called Saint Honoré le Bain, um, but it's not in a town. It's not. It, it's like this little hamlet about ten miles from the nearest town. So it's like there are a few other farmhouses near there. It's just like absolutely in the middle of nowhere, which is lovely. Um, but it's like you know, it's him and his mother in this place and. Uh, um, and how does he score some hash out there? Uh, well, he must either have friends bring it from Paris or get it when he's in Paris. Uh, um, I don't know that he's too into smoking at this point. Uh, I think he does now and then, but um, I think what, you know, cigarettes are, of course, always his major vice. Uh, and, you know, wine, women. I guess. Yeah, well, well, not so yeah, many women, women lately. Uh, that's, uh, I think he might be me back... Uh, uh, as I say, his his life has always had these long periods of isolation, followed by party dude uh, mode. So I, there's no reason why he couldn't get back into that again. Uh, what about his writing career? What's he? Uh, well, um, his, he's had somewhat of a writing career. He wrote a bunch of feature articles for the Washington Post magazine. Um, he also had an article published in Hustler uh, under a pseudonym recently, like a feature article, and I think he sold another one to them. Um, so, you know, those are like both serious markets and they made decent money for those. Um, it's uh, few, few and far between, and they're good. I mean, the, you know, this article in Hustler is on uh, like the prostitutes of uh, Paris, which he, extensively researched, uh, uh, <laughs> um, you know, but I think he does have a real love-hate relationship with writing, and uh, I've urged him, and here's a thing where he and I share some problems, I've done some writing in my life, uh, and I, you know, it's like, well, what about the real, the big thing, you know, the big novel, the big book, whatever. And, you know, there's a perpetual urge to just put off doing it. Um, this I, I trace back to Landon a lot. It, it sort of developed a real love-hate relationship with writing for me. Because you actually, one thing Landon did, it made you write a great deal. But it made you write a bunch of bullshit. It made, uh, um, my brother-in-law is involved in teaching writing to kids. And, and apparently a big point of his is getting kids to write about stuff that interests them and it makes them blossom. Lennon was the opposite. It was like training grounds for lawyers and businessmen to write like endless reams of junk about stuff you hated and crank it out. And I think both of us have inherited uh, a lot of this, uh, this love-hate relationship with writing as a result. Um, again, I, I'm speaking for myself, and I don't know how much this is true for him, 
but I think there's a lot of that. And, and with him, he has the additional uh, thing of his father uh, being a, new, uh, a reporter. His father was actually friends with a lot of uh, prominent writers like A.J. Liebling, who he's mentioned in a number of Liebling's books. Uh, so, uh, you know, there, there's that additional shadow hanging over him. And I think that he's told me that's what he really dreams of, is being like a newspaper writer or a feature writer. Again, he hasn't ever pursued this in a serious way. You know, the idea that he might do something like going to journalism school or like actually, you know, uh, making some serious effort to uh, do this. Uh, well, he writes, uh, he translates things right now. And he yeah. Does, does things he does have this related job. Related to the media. That's true. He, he does have this job. And this he seems to kind of enjoy is getting into it. Um, and it seems regular enough because yeah. it seems like the, his writing career has been kind of sporadic. It is a job, but again, it's sort of, it, it's basically just, it, it's writing a newsletter about uh, chemicals and foods. And uh, and I think it is, he has gotten interested in it and it is, you know, a good thing and he's making money and he somewhat enjoys it. So it's good. But it, again, is it the real, you know, the major, uh, uh, you know, um, piece of writing that's going to put his name on the map? Well, uh, I don't think so. Uh, so, I mean, you know, I've known the guy my whole life. I could go on and on. Uh, you could just draw me out on many incidents. What, what interests me, uh, 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 why are you interested in making a film about him? I guess so. If you tell me that, perhaps uh, it might direct me a little bit. Uh, well, I always thought that following him around for a week or so, I think you would see more, I think he does more in a week than most people do in 10 years. I think he does sometimes, uh, you know, having lived with him for long periods of time, either having him crash on my place or my crashing at his place, sometimes he does a lot, sometimes he doesn't do much. There are these, you know, periods of withdrawal fo followed by periods of frenzied activity um, so you might have to just catch him in the frenzied uh, time and uh, when will that be next I don't know he does seem to be on an upswing a little bit one thing he has been taking this medication which I forget what but uh, apparently it is working pretty well to stabilize him compared to how he used to be but he still doesn't have a lot of social skills in terms of like taking care of himself or he doesn't want to have them uh, so there, there's still a lot of problems and as I say a lot of I think a lot of his illness is brought on by not taking care of basic needs so it is a sort of a, a certain there is a certain cycle of you know having to be grounded uh, which is not too grounded what do, you, what do you think about, say, in like five or ten years, do you think you'll be doing pretty much the same thing, like going well, back and forth? Well, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, the thing I worry about, you know, his mother is in her 80s, she's had a stroke, although she seems pretty healthy at the moment, but I hate to say it because I really, I, I really dig his mother, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, it, she's not going to live forever. His father's already gone. and. When he's on his own without his mother, I think he could have a pretty hard landing. Um, uh, I mean, uh, hopefully she'll live many years to come. I, 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 I do hope so, because I, I, I like her a lot. Um, but, uh, you know, let's be real you think here. he would live, still live out in the countryside? Or? Well, I think his brother's going to end up with that house. His brother's very favored, uh, I think, by his mother. Which one, the artist? Yeah, yeah, and I think this is a bone of contention. Uh, um, <laughs> the last time I saw his brother was when it was my one visit out there to the country, and uh, and we're having lunch, and uh, and Terry was uh, he had his problems then. He was he was on some sort of medication where he was he was really speedy. Um, oh man, I wish you could have seen him. Thank God he got off this stuff. I was, he was, he actually wasn't living with his mother. He was living at this little, little sort of cabin. Um, it was like the, 
the caretaker's shack of this huge chateau. I mean, it's something, you know, certainly centuries old. You know, it's like right up this, like this little, little tiny, you know, French car in front of this, like, gigantic thing straight out of, you know, the time of Louis the Fourteenth or something, and uh, so he's in this little cabin right down the, the grounds there. You know, it's like the, the groundskeeper. Marquee. Yeah, well, he wasn't the groundskeeper, but it was like the groundskeeper's uh, shack that uh, this you know marquee or whatever allowed him to live in through knowing his family. And you know, so this place was freezing. It had a fireplace, so. You know, you'd have to like go out and get the wood out of the wood pile and start up a fire first thing in the morning because uh, it was kind of cold then. So, and he would just start rapping. Well, 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 you know, from that time until the, the embers are dying late at night and you're sort of nodding off. <coughs> you know, just non stop rap, which I could only occasionally get a word in edgewise. This is not his usual mode. This is like due to something mistaken. Um, but so I'm having, uh, we went over to his mother's house for lunch and Lawrence, his brother, is there. And, uh, and Terry, uh, uh, but he was kind of calm then he was just saying something and Lawrence is just sitting like, all right, that's enough pee pee diarrhea. <laughs> and, and his poor mother's just like, Lawrence, please, uh, you know, and uh, so uh, just sort of this very acrimonious atmosphere. That, that's the last I saw of Lawrence, actually. He was he was a little out, out to lunch at that point. Um, so, uh, but yeah, no, I think Lawrence is going to end up with a house. I, I'm not sure. And Terry may finally just have to take care of himself, but God help him. So he he's been staying in the shack then, not. In oh yeah, that that was uh, that was so long ago. He stays in mo his mother's house now. Um, that, was that a matter of choice? That's what he wanted to do is live in the shack. No, I think she just. I'm not sure what the story was on that. Um, they may have just. I think maybe because Lawrence was living there too, and they weren't getting along or something. Now he has some other place too. Um, I, I'm not sure what this, why that was, but she just got in this place, and that was, of course, in the middle of nowhere too. Is he still on the French Dole? Uh, yeah, yeah. As far as I know. So he could still feasibly go back to Paris and live there. Yeah, I mean, I could live on the amount of money he makes frugally, but I could do it. But he's like, I can't do it, you know. And, uh, so. Um, He's trying to get a place to get. I mean, he has this little apartment. Now he wants to get a big one. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, you you have an apartment, you gotta have a job to pay the rent. It's like unfortunate, uh, but that's the way it is. Have you ever worried that he that about his health, like he was going to run himself into the ground? Oh yeah, really totally. Soon? I mean, the guy, you know, smokes a million cigarettes. Uh, he. Uh, He's overweight. Uh, I, I mean, I'm contending with some of these problems myself. Again, I uh, I just got, had a visit to the doctor, and my blood pressure is up a little bit, and it's I gotta do some serious lifestyle changes myself. But uh, but my lungs are in good shape. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, it, it's just it's not good for it. He doesn't live very healthy. Doesn't eat healthy. Doesn't exercise. You know, it's as my doctor said to me: "You're a sitting duck." <laughs> uh, and I think he would probably say the same thing to him. Uh, he used to be, uh, you know, he used to take. He's never been one for exercise, um, but he used to take long walks and. Uh, he used to actually get somewhat exercise just from being so hyper. Uh, Walking around town. Yeah, but the cigarette thing is starting to weigh in on him. I, I think, you know, a doctor friend of mine has explained that you, you sort of have this extra lung capacity and you just think there's, there's more and more of it and then it's gone. And then it starts to really, uh, and I'm sure he must have reached that point by now. 
So, uh, whereas he used to take these long walks, now he's like, whoa, whoa, slow down, uh, you know. And, and Have you noticed him change a lot over the years, or has he pretty much stayed the same? Uh, well, sure. Cycles? Uh, in many ways, he's very much the same as when he was in his teens. I mean, physically, he's a lot more deteriorated, uh, as are we all, uh, I'm afraid. Uh, um, but, uh, you know, it, it's hard to know. There's a certain point at this age where you just sort of have to change your way of living a little bit, uh, uh, or you're just going to go down the tubes. Uh, it's, it's just aging. It's a natural thing. Um, in some ways, he's aged pretty well, um, but, you know, I, I don't know where he's going from here. Uh, okay. Well, thanks very much for your yeah, <laughs> So is that a llama or is that a deer chewing oh, on somebody's that's shrubbery? It's an ostrich. It's a, it's a peacock. It's hard to get a good shot. Oh man. Poor deer. So pretty. <laughs> so we're out here on safari. What are they, a pair? I think we can leave him alone now. Uh -oh. Aren't they pretty? <laughs>